Have you ever wondered what it may be like to wake up to an army at your doorstep? Well, this was and is a reality for many individuals in Ukraine, like farmer Ivan Mishenko when he woke one cold March morning to the thunderous roar of Ukrainian and Russian artillery bombarding his farm. An army supposedly there for your protection, while ironically destroying your means of subsistence. On February 24th, 2022, Russian Federation President Vladimir Putin escalated a relatively contained regional conflict into all-out war, and he declared a special military operation to remove Nazi elements within Ukraine, which was a thinly veiled guise for the true aim of Russian dominance over Ukraine. Within days, infrastructure, farmland, agriculture, and livelihoods were reduced to rubble at the hands of what has been deemed a revanchist agenda, essentially imperial aggression to seize sovereign lands. The concept of sovereignty plays into the theme of how, since 2022, resilient Ukrainian farmers, specifically smallholder farms, have found methods of retaining their food sovereignty in the face of unprovoked aggression. What are smallholder farms? Well, it is basically in the name itself. It is a small-scale farm typically ran by a family that supports said family with a blending of cash crops and subsistence farming. The crops grown and livestock reared is more diverse than the opposing large-scale industrialized agriculture operations, which are typically profit-based on a monoculture or one-crop type growth cycle. Even though it is obvious that a large-scale, massive industrialized farm can produce more than a smaller, smallholder farm, Studies have suggested that small-scale polyculture can produce more food per acre of land. Due to the smaller scale and far less reliance on industrial inputs, which include but are not limited to mass machinery, abundant amounts of seeds, heavy equipment, far more hands for labor, which during wartime conscription is a serious issue. Smallholder farms are far more resilient to turbulence and disruptions. They also offer a source of food security that large-scale industrialized agriculture does not, as the war in Ukraine has shown, when a large farm is destroyed, it is incredibly difficult to return to pre-war output, and during a crisis, the crops cannot be maintained in the way they can at a smallholder farm. To put things into a global perspective on how important smallholder farms are, there is an estimated 500 million of smallholder farms which assist in supporting almost 2 billion people. This is being seen within Ukraine where smallholder farms have been able to support communities in dire need of food when large-scale agriculture is being disrupted. Smallholder farms have been resilient since the early aughts of the war in Ukraine, having their lands trampled upon, leaving behind rotted husks of both man and machine. These smallholder farms have found methods to help answer the serious question of, how will we eat this winter? These methods consist of smaller, more diverse crops, which are able to sustain, albeit small, populations at a local level. This is a stark contrast to the tough rebound that industrial agriculture faces during open hostilities and the rebuilding phase that follows after conflict comes to a conclusion. The wanton destruction of food supplies is not a novel or unique tactic. The 
method of destroying and or attempting to withhold foodstuffs has been an age-old and highly utilized technique for as long as humans have been in open conflict with one another, which as far as we know, spans our entire existence. A more contemporary example of weaponizing access to food was seen during the Stalin-era Soviet stranglehold over Ukraine in the 1930s during forced collectivization of agriculture. Keeping even a single sack of grain could lead to execution during this tumultuous period that has become known as the Holodomor, which translates to death by hunger and sometimes murder by hunger or starvation. This is exactly what this was, as Soviet authorities intentionally induced famine by exporting all available foodstuffs out of Ukraine, ignoring the millions who perished as a result. A bit of historical evidence that runs counter to the narrative that all of the USSR was suffering these same impacts of famine was that a border town in Ukraine and a border town in Russia had drastically differing rates of death during this period which is a clear showcase that the Russian population was being fed at the expense of the Ukrainian population. This is just one of many destructive policies that Stalin's government followed during his leadership of the USSR. Raphael Lemkin, the individual who coined the term genocide, stated that the Holodomor had all the hallmarks of a genocide and was an effort of the extermination of the Ukrainian nation, something that Putin himself adheres towards in his denial that Ukraine is an independent, sovereign nation. However, even during the period of the Soviet famine, smallholder farmers were able to rebound following the pillage, plundering, and forced industrialization of their farmlands. What the large farms failed to provide small farmers made up for with their own small crops. This leads to the conclusion that investment and agriculture should be diversified from solely rebuilding large yet delicate farms into funding smaller operations. As smallholder farms have been shown to offer food security during periods that large farms cannot operate. Self-reliance is a beautiful thing. And when these farmers can maintain their dignity by providing for their communities, not only fills the bellies of hungry citizens, but also boosts the morale of suffering peoples. This resiliency is a twofold effect that is in itself a form of resistance to the aggressors. These are lessons that can be gleaned from the horrors of the war in Ukraine and adapted on a global scale to assist in combating food scarcity in regions facing conflict or food instability. A final point that can be drawn from the Ukrainian war and the over-reliance on monoculture and large-scale agriculture is that by teaching and encouraging non-farming civilians to maintain small gardens of fruits and vegetables, as well as practical livestock, such as chickens, they too can work on a micro level with the end goal of providing for themselves and assisting to combat serious issues of food security during not only times of conflict, but also periods of peace in a turbulent future faced with many uncertainties. At least one certainty to be taken away will be knowing how we will eat this winter. <laughs>